Hello. Sorry I'm late. <laughs> I am literally running so late today. I thought, okay, well, they're going to see everything. They're going to see how I completely get ready. Like, I literally just got out of the shower and threw this on. <sighs> Pray. So let's get ready together. Okay, who else is going out tonight? Let's see who's on. <laughs> who's on? So I'm just going to start doing my jam. Hey, someone's on. Okay, so let me tell you, I am like fresh out of the shower, okay? Washed my face, all that, exfoliated, whatever. So first step I do, I put on my detangle spray. Um, this is my apple cider vinegar detangle spray from DP Hue, which is the company I used to work for, you guys know. Um, I like this because it is, it does have apple cider vinegar, but doesn't smell terrible. Um, it actually has dandelion extract, which helps with hair growth. So I love that. It has heat protection. So I love that. Oh, I dropped out my brush. Okay. So I'll usually put that in and like brush my hair through to make sure that gets all the way through to the ends, right? And luckily I just got my hair colored from the amazing Giovanni. Hey, Lena. Okay, so next step. So my favorite shampoo and conditioner right now is Monet. I don't know if you guys have heard of Monet. It's, um, I have some here. It looks like Monat, like that Monet. Um, I just, I've been using their shampoos and conditioners, oh my gosh, for probably since, remember when my hair fell out and I had to get it all cut off, like like a buzz cut almost, like <laughs> pixie cut? That's when I started using Monet because it grows your hair and it's all. Sorry. Am I back on? Okay, good, I'm on. Ha <laughs> ha, that's my, yay. Ah, oh, Lena, okay, cool. We'll, we'll, we'll watch yours when I'm done. Okay, so anyway, I love the Monet hair products. And um, so the next step that I do is I like to do this. Monet has this reshape root lifter. And if you guys need the, if you need good hair product, let me know because I'll hook you up with my friend Sarah. She sells the Monet. Um, and you always get a free, free full-size product with your orders. So I love that. So next I do the thickening spray. But yeah, this has changed my hair. So like the shampoo and conditioner, um, it, the shampoo, you actually shampoo twice with it and then you condition. And oh my gosh, it'll make your hair turn to butter and like super smooth. And my hair's grown so fast. I just got it cut. You guys know how quickly it's grown from my, my debacle. Okay, so <laughs> those are what I use. I like to use those products. And then this stuff, I bought this at, at Salon Giovanni, which is where I get my hair done in Plainfield. This R and Co. It's called Motorcycle. So I just take a tiny bit of that, like literally the size of a pea, and I'll put that all over. It smells so good. I usually start in the back. Hey guys, thanks for joining. We're totally getting ready together. So if you want to get ready with me, get ready because we're gonna blow dry my hair and everything. This could take a little while. <laughs> Or if you're bored later, you can rewatch. But I feel like we should start getting ready together for things. It's 4th of July. Who's going out tonight? Give me a thumbs up if you're going out tonight. Because I'm going out tonight. I have a babysitter. Okay, so that's the motorcycle. So what that does is that kind of adds like a little bit of like stuff to your hair. So that you can like curl it or straighten it or whatever. And it stays really, really wet. Or it just kind of like holds volume. Um, my, I guess you guys saw, if you saw my post, I bought... Actually, I got this for Mother's Day. Oh, yeah. Thanks, Nicole. Um, I got this for Mother's Day. Oh, it was like the best. Um, this is the T3, and I love this because, watch, it like collapses down. So it's like really small for travel. Um, so, and it has actually really a lot of power to it. Not like strong blow power, but like heat. And it weighs seriously nothing. So I love that. And then always you want to use this attachment. Here's a great tip. If you ever feel like your hair is frizzy and you're blow drying it like this, use this attachment because then you won't have as much frizz. Um, Cause, okay, so what I do is I use a round brush. This is the one I love. They have this at Ulta, ceramic and ion, and ion tourmaline. And that helps to reduce frizziness too. What I didn't realize that somebody just showed me is that it has this handy dandy little thing on the bottom that you can go like that with. So then you can either use it to clean your brush or, you know, like if you're parting it and you want to be all professional. Um, but I love this one because it's real smooth right here. My last one I had, um, I don't even still have it anymore. I threw it away. My hair kept getting caught in here and it was like, as I was like rolling it, it was like pulling my hair out and it hurt really bad. 
So I like this one because it doesn't pull my hair at all. But I did get this one at Marie Tricosi once when my hair was a little bit shorter. And you may notice this is a lot longer than the usual ones, um, which is nice when your hair is short because you can literally just go around the back but it's really hurts a little bit. It's a little bit stiffer. This one's a little bit softer. So it's a, if you have really, really short hair, you're gonna love this one because then you can go all the way to the back and over here <laughs> you can get the whole way around versus you know this one you'd have to do section, section, section. Whereas this you can just all the way around. So I do like that with the shorter hair, um, but this is the one I'm liking right now. Okay, should I wear my hair straight or curly? So straight hair, Let's do um, the flag and curly hair, like Marilyn Monroe-ish, let's do a thumbs up. So what do you guys think? Straight hair, flag, curly hair, thumbs up. What do you want me to do? I guess I'll just start blow drying it and see what you guys start to say, okay? So you'll see, like, I'll show you how I blow, blow dry my hair, okay? And I'll give you a little tip. So with this curly, with this hair dryer, can you still hear me? Can you guys still hear me? So with this hair dryer, you don't want to actually brush your hair until it's at least like 75% dry, if they say the weight. So I just like to get it like pretty much a little more than halfway dry before I start to go in with this brush. So I just kind of like to try to get it, you know, along the edge. Okay, good. You can still hear me? Awesome. Hey, Jackie. You guys are going to watch me completely get ready. So this is not going to be a quick video. I'm not going to lie. But if you're bored, perfect. Let's get ready. Or if you're getting ready, come on. Let's do this together. I'm going to do lashes and everything. We're going to totally do this. So where are y'all going tonight? Who's going out and where are you going? It's like 4th of July kickoff, right? Is anyone going to Rib Fest tonight? If the B-52s are performing... I don't really have a desire. <laughs> I know some people might like them, but I don't I don't know. My mom and I would have a good time, right? Well, if she's watching this. Some love shack. Oh thank you. It's a dress. It's like a little romper y thing. It's cute. Oh, uh, no raining there. Oh no, Nicole. Shoot. Hey Nicole, do you guys have this place near you called Top Golf? It's so phenomenal. We just went there last weekend, you guys saw. I'm obsessed. So my hair is a little bit dry, so I'm just gonna brush it with a regular brush. And somebody told me once that if I brush my hair because I have a bob, if I brush it all like this, it picks up the roundness of my head and kind of smooths it out. So I usually go all this direction, plus then you get the volume. What else are you guys doing tonight? So now that that side's like all dry, that's when I'll start to go in with this brush and go the other way. So with this dryer, with this little shooting thing, you wanna go with the direction that the hair is smooth, right? So your hair actually, the actual shaft of your hair looks like this way. So you wanna smooth that out. I still don't know if I'm doing my hair curly or straight. You guys didn't tell me. Should I do curly or straight? What do you want me to do? I'm feeling like with this dress I have a lot going on, so maybe I should just wear it straight. And we're playing, we're popping the red lip today because it's like red, white, and blue, right? So notice I'm just taking it in section after section. And long hair, you can kind of do the similar thing. Smooth it out, right? And that tourmaline ion, it helps to reduce frizziness and adds shine. So then I take the next section. Can you guys see me? And I'll blow dry that one smooth and shaped. And then it starts to get a little difficult because everything's like going a little bit wetter up top. Okay. 
So then I start to go on this side. I kind of want to leave the top for last. I don't want to overheat the top. So I kind of let it get as dry as possible. So I do the same thing on this side. Okay. And it's easy when you have short hair because you can just like, roll it. Long hair I know is a little more difficult. But it's the same idea of like taking sections. And then the back of the see. Hey Georgia, what are you doing today? We're getting ready together. <laughs> so if you want to get ready, grab your hair stuff, grab your makeup, let's get ready. You may learn some tricks. I don't know, I feel like I do a different thing every day. So maybe if we just do this every once in a while, you'll learn some stuff. So this I'm going to brush up in the back and then start in sections on the bottom. Same, I'm twisting my brush. You see me rolling it? Twisting the brush. And it's a little shorter back there, so I don't really have to like drag it out like that as much until it starts to get a little longer up here. I'm trying to duck down so you guys can see. Hey Georgia, what are you doing today? Georgia, we're, I'm asking everybody, are they going out tonight? Are you going to rib fest? Like, what are you doing tonight? Okay, now is when we start the top. So, I don't want it to be too, like, you know, like, Hillary Clinton-ish. <laughs> so, I usually do this side, like, the same way. And then, with the front, with the bangs, I actually go a different direction. You go down. Try it. You'll see something different. And then you can kind of do this and it kind of blends out. And then I'm going to take all this stuff that I didn't do and just go up like that. And then I like to go all over and just like Make sure everything's dry because some of it feels a little wet still, like at the root. Love your hair, Marilyn. Thank you. Should I wear it curly or straight? You guys want me to curl it? Maybe I'll save it curly for next time. I'll do some, some tricks on like how to curl your hair with a hair straightener and how to curl your hair with a curling iron and how to curl your hair with hot rollers. And we'll do some tricks with that next time. All right. Okay, woo! All right, hair's dry. So I'm gonna turn on my straightener. This is my other baby that I got for Mother's Day. These are the two things I wanted. These are the T3, the rose gold and white. Yeah, that's what I really wanted. Look at those bling blings. I love rose gold and white, as you can see all over my place. <sighs> it's hot now. <laughs> okay, this thing heats up really fast. So it's blinking. Oh, here's a cool tip, tip that I learned. So you know how like it's got that setting where you can go like from the light to, you know, like level one, two, three, four, five, or whatever the temperature is. My temperature goes, it doesn't say what temperature it is. It just has a one dot, two dot, three dots, and four dots. So like in the, between the two and three would probably be like medium. Like if you think of your stove. So, so you're never what like white people you should never put your straightener higher than like medium anybody who's more ethnic hair that's for the level threes and fours and if you are doing it more than like level two you're cooking your hair too much and you're probably causing a lot of damage you can still accomplish a lot with even the the first level setting you just have to slow down okay <laughs> okay you see how shiny my hair is that's because of that monet stuff I'm not kidding. It's the bomb. And I don't sell it. You guys know. My girl, my girlfriend Sarah does. And I'm sure she'd be happy to give you her info. But it's like changed my hair. It's hard to get blonde hair this shiny. It really is. Plus I think I use good like hair dryer and straightener. And I think that helps. Okay. So I'm just going to kind of like straighten a little bit here. I don't want it to look too like round. I don't know. It just bothers me. 
Thank you, Georgia. Yes, yes. Don't put your straightener or your curling iron up higher than a two. If your hair is a little bit damp, actually, that's okay. That's what causes that steam. You know, oh, Moroccan. See, I actually like, I was using Moroccan. I have it here. Um, but I started using this one instead, this DP Hue one, because regular Moroccan oil, where is it? Here it is. Ooh, let me show you. So regular, and it, Moroccan oil is nice because it does add some heat protection to your hair. Um, look at this. So regular Moroccan oil, right? And you may not notice this either. So let me know if you don't, but Moroccan oil comes in just like a regular and also it'll say light. The light does not mean lighter, like heaviness. It means for lighter colored hair because they make your hair very yellow. So like I just did my purple shampoo when I was in the shower and for blondes, you know, like it gets kind of yellow and brassy and nobody likes that. And especially now the trend is like so grayish, ashy blonde. Um, so anyway, that Moroccan oil can add that yellow to your hair because look at this. So like here's Moroccan oil, right? See how yellow it is? Well, that's dripping. <laughs> See how yellow and yucky it is so that can actually make your hair look brassy or faster versus um the dp hue one this that that is at ulta that i used to work for they're at the bomb theirs is clear see no color oops and it does add a ton of shine to your hair and it has the heat protection but there's no color to it and it smells amazing so i actually would say instead of this one the Moroccan oil, try the DP Hue. They have it at Ulta. It is $35, but this is like $40 anyway. Um, but this is really good because it adds that heat, it adds high heat protection. So those of you, it does have liquid shea butter in it too. So if you are of ethnic um, descent, have ethnic hair, and you want some serious protection from that high, high heat, that will give it to you. Okay, so I would definitely, I mean, I'm just going to take a little bit of that that's left over on my hand and just kind of smooth it out okay so I don't really straighten my whole hair I just straighten kind of the side so it's not so like boop because I hate that <laughs> so you're just getting ready with me you're just seeing what I do <laughs> and every day is different you know as you can imagine all right so my kit is all like right here down on the floor because I had it in my case from yesterday from going on location but let me see here how can I do this let me move my hair stuff out of the way because hair is done and let me set up my skincare and makeup. I wish I could turn on the music, but I'm worried because they say if you have music on during these, oh, I know what I'll do, I'll put, use a chair. Um, if you have music on during these, that Facebook will delete it because you don't actually own the rights to that music. So I gotta find out about that because some people I know do play music during their lives. I think you have to say something like, dear Facebook, I don't own the rights to this music. I don't know, um, Nicole might know. I'll have to ask her if she's still on. Okay. Oh, hairspray. So hairspray, the Monet is the bomb. Um, I have in my other bathroom, I was using, um, oh, what was that brand? The silver one. <sighs> Kenra. I was using Kenra. But I felt like after a long time, it was actually damaging my hair. And the Monet one is like the perfect amount of hold it does smell really good, but it doesn't make your hair crunchy. So that's pretty much it for hair. Sometimes at the end I'll flip it too, so I'll show you that. Okay, now it's time for skincare. So I'm going to actually use my serum, my Sotox serum, because I can't live without it. Sotox is like a natural muscle relaxer. Um, I can actually go a lot longer in between getting my Botox because of this. <laughs> Plus, it helps with like lines and wrinkles and puffiness and everything around the eyes. Now you want to cut your hair? No, oh, Georgia, you look so pretty. Your hair is so pretty. Hey, Georgia, do you have a purple umbrella that you left at my house? I have a, I think I have your purple umbrella. Because I think it was you when you came in the door that you set down your umbrella. I took it from you and closed it for you and set it down. Is that your purple umbrella? Okay, next I use is Skin Therapist. <sighs> Sorry, I'm like shedding. Um, this is a moisturizer. It's very inexpensive. It's great for like normal to dry skin. Okay, good. I got your umbrella. We have to now we have to meet up again so I can give it to you. Um, so this moisturizer, that's okay. Don't even be sorry. Are you kidding? 
I leave stuff at people's houses all the time. <laughs> All right, so that's my favorite moisturizer. It's really, it's for normal to dry skin, but I'm not super dry, but it's just like feels so perfect. Like, I don't know what I would do without it. Hey, Brie, what's going on? What are you doing today? I'm just getting ready, and I'm like, everybody's going to get ready with me. I had this whole intention to have everything done except for my eyeliner and lip, and I was running late. So I thought, you know what, I'm just going to like go get ready, and you guys can just join me or not. I don't really care. It'll be fun, and maybe you'll learn some things along the way. But I do have my perfect red lip. Oh my gosh, wait till you see this. Okay, so serum, moisturizer, done. Primer, primer, primer. I like the spray. Mm -mm -mm. That feels great. So that is instead of using like a silicone-based primer, I won't name whose. Um, some of the most popular ones are silicone based. They feel kind of like that plasticky feel. This one is um, silicone free. So what it does is it plumps out your pores and your lines and everything like that um, with hydration instead of with liquid plastic basically. So that kind of preps the skin. And then it's foundation time. And I'm obsessed with our foundation. It's the Botanical Foundation, the RCMA. If you have not tried this foundation, you're missing out because every single person who I know who uses it is like, where has this been my whole life and why have I not been using this? It is the bomb. It's the best foundation out of everything I've I have a full kit here, a full studio. I don't even use any of my other ones anymore. Okay, if I can find it. I have like a million things, as you can imagine. No, nope, that's not my color. No, nope, that's not my color. It's probably the last one, right? Bingo. <laughs> Okay, so um, definitely you want to use a foundation brush or you can use a beauty blender. If you use a beauty blender, you want to wet it, squeeze it out, and then go. But I need coverage today because I'm going out. Oh, we're going to do lashes too. Oh, and I have so much to tell you about lashes. Maybe I'll save that for another tutorial because I just got some new ones. I'm going to show them to you. From Sonia Rosselli, who is like the bomb makeup artist. And I'm just not quite sure yet. I need to keep practicing with them. I'm doing a little full coverage because I'm going out and it's what? 3.30? 2.30? So I want this to last all day, all night. And I do go down here just because in the summer I'm lighter from here to here. Most people are because the sun doesn't get there you know it's like I'm tan here tan here but I'm white from here to here and that makes your neck look bigger which nobody wants so I do put foundation just like here on my neck especially especially when I have a tan what time did I start this we're gonna count it takes me 30 minutes to get ready oh wait some comments wait maybe back up Brie, oh, I'm going to cook out in a few. Going to have fun with this monster climbing blow up water slide. Awesome. I'm going to listen and watch while I cook. Okay, yay. I can keep you company while you're cooking. Brie, you must, I can't wait to try your cooking one day. And I've tried to do that bounce house thing. I want one of those, but they're very expensive. Oh my gosh. Okay, so I did that foundation. Let's do some concealer. Uh, uh, not that color. This is the bomb concealer too. Maybe that one. I think that's the number two. I think I want a number three. There it is, number three. That's the one. Okay, so same thing. You want to use a concealer brush. And you want to just apply it under the eyes. Oh, I gotta do my lashes. Let me do the under eye and then I'll do my lashes. You want to go down a little bit further past just your actual, you know, crease there. So it doesn't look like raccoon. And yes, you do want to go look just a hair lighter if you can. If you have really bad dark circles, you can cut the color with like a corrector. And we have a really good corrector. Let me see if I can find my corrector. So our corrector is more yellow. Here it is right here. See how that's more yellow? So if you ever do want to try 
to correct. Like I don't really have really bad dark circles, but let's be just let me just show you. So like see that yellow. See how that yellow kind of brightens on my eye? You could always do that and then go with the concealer on top. And I can't figure out which concealer. I have like a hundred. Do you see already how it's like brighter on that side? Then you take your regular concealer and you can go on top. So you'll see a lot of palettes that have two concealers and that's why. Because they give you a corrector color and a regular color that you can use on your whole face. I'm going to use some on my nose too because look at how that's covering. I have a little bit of redness on my nose and just like extra freckles from the sun. Yeah, look at the difference. Big difference, right? So let's correct on the other eye now. So if you have like really, really, really bad dark circles or you think you do, um, correct it. This is the number one I think this is. I'll double check if you if you want this. I can look right now actually. Yeah, number one is the corrector. And then I'm using the number three concealer, but there's also a number two that's a little bit lighter. And then there's um, a double zero, which is for like really pale skin, but it's beautiful. So that's like extra, extra. I like to go here and here too, because it's starting to fold here and light makes it go forward, dark makes it go back, right? All right, I'm going to pause and do lashes, and then we'll come back to, like, doing more highlighting around the eyes and stuff, too. Let me go here and here, too, while I have it. Anywhere that's, like, wrinkly or is, like, creasing in, you can highlight there with that corrector. Okay, anyway, lashes. All right, let's do, I have a couple different kinds. Um, hmm. these are like, do you want me to, I'm going super dramatic because you know why? It's 4th of July and we're going to do a super winged eyeliner and a red lip. So let's go for it. Okay. So these are the Eyelore Wispy number 117. I really like the Eyelores a lot. I did like the Kiss ones, but I'm liking the Eyelores and you know why? Because they only attach it down in two spots. So like the the um, kiss ones are attached like in the whole the whole thing around here, and when you pull it off, it bends it. So you may have like one lash going a weird direction. I like these because they're only see the two little one, two those little holes right there. That's just a little sticky thing, and that's the only place they're stuck down. So when you pull it off, it doesn't like bend the lash. That drives me nuts. Um, my favorite glue is the Duo lash adhesive in dark and they do actually have this at the matte counter or um like ulta's would carry it and stuff like that so i'm just going to put a little drop of that on the back of my hand okay enough for both lashes i would say it's a about the size of an eraser head and then i close it up don't feel panicked or rushed because you actually have a minute you want to let it kind of dry grab a pair of tweezers i have tweezers that i use that i use specifically for lashes so while we're waiting watch this this is the red lip it's the best red ever mm -mm -mm. and it feels so good and the lipsticks these this is number 104 so these actual like tube lipsticks from us, they feel so good, but they're not like too juicy that they feather. I hate when that happens. So that feels amazing and it does stand pretty well. So now that my glue, see how the edge of it, the outsides of it are starting to dry because this glue dried black. So now I'm going to take my lashes and if you have a hard time knowing which one's which, just like hold it like this and go, okay, and set it like that on your, on your table. So I know this is the right eye, right? And if you have a smaller eye, I know that this is fine on my eye, but sometimes you have to cut them. So you can actually place them and measure. And if you have to trim, I usually trim from the inside, not the outside. Because the outsides are usually either a little bit more tapered out or um, the insides could be a little bit shorter. And then you know your outsides are gonna match. But you just basically, run that in the glue. I like to attach it in the middle and then on the right 
oops, I blinked, and then on this middle, or on the inside. It's okay if you mess up. I'm going to just move it a hair. Can you guys see what I'm doing? Okay, so see how I looked up and now I have glue on my eyelid? It just wipes right off. This is not like the glue that they use for lash extensions that lasts a week. It's just the duo glue. So it's like a one day use only. I'm pinching the lash together with my lash. Pinch, pinch. You see? So there's nothing in between. Don't worry if you get glue up here. It'll like actually come off because we have no makeup on there. But doesn't that look so much better? <laughs> okay, let's do the other eye. Okay, so I'm grabbing it with tweezers. Okay, I'm running. Oh wait, you can't see what I'm doing. <laughs> I'm running the lash through the glue. Boop. Now I have the perfect amount of glue right there. And I'm keeping it pinched. Don't let go. Okay, I have to look in my mirror to do this. I can't look at you guys. Oops. See, it's okay if you mess up. You gotta be able to, to move it. But that's why we wait till the glue is almost dry. And then you want to make sure, you want to look at both eyes and say, is that equal? It's, I would say it's not. This needs to go a little bit further in. The glue is almost dry, so I have like a couple seconds left to move it. Don't worry about the glue if you get glue everywhere. It's okay, we're going to get that off. Do they look equal? I have to look closer. Yep. Okay, now my lashes are equal. Now don't worry about this glue. Let me pinch my, you can just keep pinching. If it's too wet and it's moving, that's why you wait till the glue's almost dry. I'm just pinching those together with my lashes. Okay. What do you guys think? Can you do that? <laughs> ah, lipstick on teeth. Okay, here's how you get lipstick off your teeth. I have actually have met people lately that didn't know this trick, and I was like, people still don't know this trick? If lipstick's getting on your teeth, you take your finger and go like that, and all the lipstick's on my finger. And I will get no more lipstick on my teeth. Okay. So, I'm going to let that dry. Okay, I like to apply lashes. I've tried it applying it onto clean eyelids and I've tried it applying it onto like eyeshadow primer. Mm, I don't know, it's like equal. <laughs> I still can't decide if which stays better. Um, but I usually like to do it onto clean. And you gotta make sure that your, your uh, bottom and top lid is not glued together with one of those strings because then that just feels weird. So you just kind of pull, okay. They're perfect now, and they feel very comfortable. Oh, except for that makeup I just messed up. Okay, so now, do you see I still have like this creamy foundation and concealer and everything on? I need to set that. So I'm gonna do finish my face and let my lash glue totally dry before I go to do eyeshadows or anything like that, because then it'll mess them up. And by the way, that glue that I have on my hand, boop, gone, okay? It's just gone. So you don't have to worry, there's nothing. It's gone, it's all in the tissue. Okay. Now, setting powder. Oh, hello, it's over here. No, it's not. So our setting powder is the bomb because it's totally translucent. Um, you guys know about baking, some of you maybe. And baking is like when you take like this one, like the Laura Mercier, you know, loose powder or the Ben, ben Nye banana powder. Where is it? I have it. You know, you take those, I don't even use it, so I don't know where even where it is. It's somewhere buried. I don't even use it. But anyway, that's like when you take your powder and you cake it on under the eyes with like a beauty blender and you roll it and pat it in and then they have the, what looks like flour under their eyes and you let it bake for 30 minutes and then you brush it off. This is the way he does it on Kim Kardashian, so everybody wants to do it that way. 
but do you have 30 minutes right now to let your powder bake? I don't. So anyways, it's unnecessary anyway. I'm just patting this out. So my concealer, because I put on all those correctors and it has a little layers, is creasing a little bit. And if you ever notice your concealer creasing, it's because you need to set it better with a setting powder. So I'll take like a wide kind of angled brush like this and I'll run it in the setting powder and I'll, that way you can get nice and close to the eye. So it's almost like baking, it's just you don't have to wait a half an hour to do it. <laughs> and with this powder, I know if you're having lines around your eyes, you're worried like will that show my lines more? The answer is no, because this is like, when you feel it, it's like the most micro refined chopped up powder, even more so than like the Laura Mercier um, face powder. And actually I know Laura and she says don't use that for that. She does have a great under eye brightener powder, so I do recommend that if it still doesn't look light enough for you under your eyes, um, and it's super loose and it's like super chopped up. So that's a really good setting powder for under eye too. But I just use this uh, translucent face setting powder to set my under eyes too. And that way you get nice and close to the under eye and it's really pushing it in there. And then if you ever notice your mascara is smudging a lot, maybe you're not setting your under eye concealer enough. Okay. Um, so then you take your big fluffy face brush kind of like that one and you brush it in there hide your lips <laughs> if you've already done them oh now I got a little lipstick right there <laughs> it's okay so now we're gonna set that foundation and concealer everywhere so that then when I go to put my bronzer on and my blush I'm going on to powder not cream does that make sense? So then your powder and your bronzer and everything is like super soft. I gotta fix the hair back. Okay. Still, we're not worrying about the eyes. The eyes are just still drying that glue. I want it like 100% dry by the time I get to eyeshadows and eyeliner and stuff. Um, for bronzer, let me use our bronzer. I like to use a brush like this. You guys have probably seen this. I've done contouring stuff. So you wanna start with the middle of your ear and go towards the corner of your mouth and then just kind of blend it. Okay, see, I already just lost five pounds. <laughs> okay, and then you take the temples. For me, I'm a round face, but that kind of works well for a lot of people. If you have a larger forehead, you're gonna to wanna to go all the way across it. Um, if you have a more square shaped face, you're gonna to wanna to go like, especially one, two, three, four, like on the four points. The goal of contouring is to make your face look more oval. And I'm very round, so when I contour like this, doesn't it kind of make my face look a little more elongated? I'm gonna go a little bit here and here too. And then I like to do my neck because it makes me look skinnier. Do you see how soft it's going on? Because I have powder there. If you go here, it makes your bottom lip look bigger. Mm -mm. You know, people do like contouring on the sides of the nose. If you have a very wide nose, you can go down the sides of your nose, right? Like that, it makes my nose look more narrow. If you have a very big long, like tip on your nose, you can darken that. And look, it just became more like, boop, buttony. I like my nose, I don't need to do too much to it, but if you have a big bump in your nose, you can take like a like an edge like this, you can go across it right there. And it makes that look smaller. So dark makes it go smaller, large makes it look bigger. That's what contouring is. I'm gonna get rid of that because I don't want my nose to look smaller. I already have a teeny tiny nose. <laughs> Best eraser, by the way, if you do goof, use your foundation brush. Mm -mm -mm. Mm -mm -mm. Just fixing, okay. Blush, so now we're gonna take our blush, and this is the number five, my favorite one. It's called, it's called blushing. <laughs> I love it, blushing ink, right? So then we're gonna put this on the apples, and this has like the prettiest glow. Look at that, it's like Barbie. Temples, nose, and chin. Then you're not just cheeks. Can we say it again? Cheeks, cheeks, temple, temple, nose, chin. Okay, now it's like just where I want it. Okay, it's time for the eyes. Ah. Hold on, let me readjust. Okay. <laughs> so far so good, any questions? 
No? Okay, good. All right, so eye time. So I still have all that glue right there, right? So I'm just going to take actually a dry Q-tip and just kind of rub that off. And that just kind of cleans that right off. See that little glob right there? Bye bye. And that little dot right there. You don't want to rub too close because I'll rub that lash off. See? But, you know, just get the most of it off. We're going to cover the rest with eyeliner anyway, so it doesn't matter too much. Okay, so now that concealer that I used under my eyes, either one really, um, your concealer, if you're using this kind, which is the Krylon, is the best eyeshadow primer. Um, let's see, where's my concealer brush? There it is. So the same concealer, oh wait, that's a different one. The same concealer that I used under my eyes, I'm going to use on my eyelid. Doesn't have to be perfect, but I just want to cover all the skin. The whole lid. I wish I could play music. Touch up under there. Okay. Now we are doing bright red lip. So I'm not going to go into some crazy, like dramatic eyeshadows. Then people are going to be like, whoa, who's that? You know what? Walking down the street. Um, I don't want that. I want it to be soft. Maybe have a little color, but I don't want it to look too dramatic because if you have too dramatic of eyes and then you do too dramatic of a lip, it's like, hello, too much makeup, you know? So I'm going to do my eyes a little bit softer. I'm going to do, let's see, which one should I do? Um, let me grab my chart so I know what these are called. I am going to play with just like a soft peachy, we'll do the peach. It's called Peachy Gleam. It's this one right there. Okay. So we'll do Peachy Gleam all over the lid. And that's a nice like soft, that could be a good like just everyday color. These are very pigmented. So there, it's a company called El Maquillage. These are the ones I sell, but um, under Limelight. But uh, the formula is from El Maquillage, which is the original formula from Mac before they got bought out by Estee Lauder and changed the formula um, and did all those other things to it. <laughs> so this is the original El Maquillage eyeshadow formulation. So now I'm using this white. It's called Cream Boat. Okay, that's this one in the top corner. So I'm gonna use the cream boat under the brow. So I really could just stop there, but I'm gonna do just a little bit more. Okay. And now I love, love, love this one right there. That is called Blush Hour. It's like a little more color. I'm gonna just put a little of that like in a seven. So a little bit along the lash line and a little bit in the crease. Okay. Lash line and crease. So I think that's about as dramatic as I'm gonna go with the shadows. I'm not gonna put anything underneath. I want the attention to be all like on top, but some of that eyeshadow did drip down a little bit. You can see it right here. So I'm going to use my magic eraser, which is my foundation brush just to clean that up. Okay. Eyeliner. Best eyeliner I've ever used in my entire life. And everybody else who gets it says the same thing. <laughs> okay. Here it is. The limelight one. This is the bomb. Now we're going to do our wing, okay? And so you see the tip. Wait, oh, there's the camera. <laughs> you can see the point. It's very, very pointy, okay? It was like life size. Okay, so first thing you want to do. So if you start on the inside and work your way out, you're going to make your eyes look more almondy shaped. If you start on the outside and work your way in, you're going to make your eyes look a little more doughy. 
So somebody who has very almondy shape eyes would be like an Asian eye. I'm going to want to make go that way out in to make their eyes look a little more like rounded and lifted. My eyes are very rounded, so I like to make mine look a little more almondy. If you don't know which one to do, do one eye in out and do the other eye out, eye out in and see which eye you like better. I've had people say, no matter what I do, my eyes don't look even when I do my eyeliner. And I'm like, well, do you do one in out? And then on the other, I go out in. And I'm like, yes, I do. And I'm like, that's why. So for the, I'm going to start on the inner corner. Oh gosh, I'm not even looking in the mirror. And I'm going to go. And this, this eyeliner I love too because it draws on top of that lash glue. And you know how like when you do, I don't know if you do fake eyelashes, the glue on the eyelash itself is kind of shiny. So this covers that. Okay, so that's where you put it if you don't want a wing. Okay. I like to kind of look down and keep my eyes like this for a little bit because if I quickly look up, Boop, it's going to stamp onto my eyelid. <laughs> so I'm going to let that dry. I'll show you how to make it into a wing. Hang on. Okay, I got to itch. <laughs> All right, so the same thing on this eye. I'm going to pull a little bit. I'm going to start on the inside. Go across the top. You don't have to, like, rush. You can go back again and again until you get it exactly where you want it. Okay? Oh, that one's got a little bit of a upward. There we go. Okay? So that's kind of like if you don't want a wing. Let me look at the camera. Okay? If you do want a wing, so I'm going to take... I'm going to take the eyeliner and I'm going to draw up and then I'm going to connect it. Think of it as a triangle and then I'm going to color it in and there's your wing. So on this eye, I'm going to draw up, connect with the corner and fill it in. And now I feel like going underneath a little bit. I don't like to go all the way across the bottom unless I'm doing like a super smoky eye because that makes your eyes look smaller. But that's a pretty big wing. You can make it bigger if you want, but. And every eye is different. You know what I mean? I'm trying to make sure they're equal. I'm just looking in my mirror. This one may be a little dip there. Okay, yeah, they look pretty equal to me. think don't you think okay and then if you do see lashes like in between you know if you have skin underneath your false eyelashes you're gonna want to fill that in how long is this thing going it doesn't tell me I feel like oh wait I have a clock have I been going 20 minutes <laughs> oh well Okay, that like lifts the eye and then too, I do put mascara on these false lashes. So once I do that, they're going to look amazing. So I'm just coloring in all that skin. Okay, done. Best black eyeliner ever. This will be like this all night. And even if I fall asleep like this, it'll be like this when I wake up. It's the best. And it's super black. Okay, mascara. So our mascara, I love, love, love. I switched from one that was $40 to mine, and it's $20, so that tells you how much I love it. And if you're anything you don't want your mascara to do, so I'm going to open a fresh one, actually. If you don't want your mascara to clump, if you don't want it to smudge, if you don't want it to, uh, what's the word? Flake. If you don't want to do any of that stuff, this is the one for you because it's the bomb. Okay, hold on. I got to readjust again. <laughs> now I understand why my customers are like, your stool's uncomfortable. I got to get a new stool. All right, so this is a brand new one. So this one has the fibers built in. So I like to do bottom lashes first. Oh, 
Don't get it on your blonde hair. Okay. And then I like to go down the back of the lash and then up the front. Cool, right? <laughs> and of course these are false eyelashes, but on a daily basis, this is the mascara I use. It's great. I mean, it's 20 bucks. I mean, don't use waterproof every day. It's so bad for your lashes. Speaking of lashes, I have two friends, or actually one friend, one client, that I did in the past two days that I was like, that their lashes looked like this. And I was like, whoa. And they were using the Rodan and Fields Lash Boost. So shout out to my Rodan and Fields people because that Lash Boost, dang, I got to get some of that. So now I'm going to have all you guys hitting me up. I want that. Oh my gosh. I couldn't believe what I've seen. All right. I think that's everything. Oh, do you guys want to see some highlighter? So this is uh, my favorite. Everybody who's taking my class knows this. The Jaclyn Hill. The Becca Jaclyn Hill. Um, so when you apply highlighter, you want that like here. See that? Bam. That's like those Instagram girls, right? Well, I guess I'm an Instagram girl too. <laughs> I'm just a lot older than them. Okay. And they go on the tip of their nose. I don't like that. I think that looks strange. Oh, I didn't do my eyebrows. I like to go on the top, above the top lip, because that does make your top lip look bigger. And then let's do brows, and I'll show you where I go above the brows. Okay. So for brows, I'm going to use eyeshadow with our 10 Years Younger Setting Spray. Um, here it is right here, 10 Years Younger Finishing Spray, which is the same original Skinnavia formulation before it was bought by Urban Decay and changed. So this is the bomb. Okay. All right. I told you guys this is a pro, what the pros use. All right. So what I do is I use, see, here's my eyeshadows again, right? I like to use, I've told you guys this before, but I, I think I'm going to use that one because I'm doing a little more dramatic and it's still like a lot of times I'll use this one on my brows. And it darkens a lot when it touches the skin, but today I'm going to use this one. I would never use that one. Um, but if you're dark hair, you'd like that darker one. Okay, where's my eyebrow brush? There it is. Um, my favorite eyebrow brush is e.l.f. $3 at Target. Love this brush. I have like five of them. Okay, so you spray it with the 10 Years Younger Setting Spray. And then you dip it. I'm going to dip it into that medium brownish color. And this will be like the most soft, natural way to do it. Um, and you can feel that your brush is still a little bit wet. So I just like to follow across the top. I'm not going to do crazy brows. I don't like that. And that, everybody's getting real sick of that. <laughs> but I just definitely want to shape them up. It makes a huge difference. I'm going to go back one more time. You see how that just makes my the edge of my brows just a little bit smoother? I'm going to spray it one more time and just get a little bit extra grab right there. And then I want that to go almost to that upward line. So straight up is where you want to start out and straight out is where you want to stop. So then I'm going to use the spoolie on the other end and just soften that. Makes the biggest difference in the whole wide world. Okay, so I'm going to spray it, dip it in that shadow. This one I have to start in a little bit further to make it match my other brow. And I have a crease there. See it? <laughs> so it's nice when I fill it in there, you don't see that crease as much. And I'm going to follow a little bit across the top and across the bottom. This one is a little bit better. You know, everybody's got a perfect brow that does everything that you want perfectly. And the other one's like a hot mess. I'm going to spray it one more time. Dip it, extend it just a hair, and then soften. And then what you see those people doing like on Instagram and stuff is just perfecting their brows. This is why you, this is why when you hire a makeup artist, you pay more 
because there it's like all these steps that are like perfecting it and perfecting it and perfecting it so I'm gonna take that concealer actually I'm gonna use that corrector one and I'm gonna just kind of perfect it this is what you see us doing when we're like being super OCD And then this would be like ready for a picture, right? <laughs> Same thing on the bottom. So it's not maybe reality for you for every day. And actually when you see those brows that like fade, have you ever seen those brows that look like they fade right here? Like from super sheer to like color and you can totally see that it's drawn on. It's like, ugh. they actually draw the whole, draw like a uni and then they take this and go whoop in the middle. And that's how they get that fade thing. I'm not a big fan of that. I like it when it looks just polished, but you know, you can tell like, wow, it's done by, with professional makeup. You know what I mean? Okay. So that's like another place you can highlight. And then if you wanted to, you could take like that Becca Hill or Becca Jacqueline Hill highlighting powder. And you could highlight with the highlighter like right there and there and even under the brow so that's like a lot I know but you guys wanted to see me get ready and that's it so I said at the end sometimes I'll like to like flip my hair well first let me spray it so I set it with setting spray the whole thing this will stay all night So winged eyeliner, firecracker, ready for 4th of July, right? Mm, okay. And then I like to, at the end, take my hair and just flip it another way. Oh, look at that. Now I have a ton more volume. So if you style it to one side, at the end, try flipping it. And if you're somebody who parts your hair in the same place every single day, Start taking turns to other sides. You'll get tons more volume. People are always looking to, to do stuff to get more volume. I'm like, just part your hair on the other side. Okay, cool. And that's it. I'm ready to go. All right, so I hope you guys enjoyed. I know it's kind of long, but it was fun. We got ready together. You can also do a little liquid bronzer on my body. I don't know, should I do that? Oh wait, that's not liquid bronzer. I grabbed the wrong thing. I grabbed our new men's line. Oh my gosh. If you want your man to smell amazing, this is the body scrub slash face scrub slash wash. It smells so good and it leaves your skin like cool and like clean like really clean and then they put this on it's like a moisturizer slash balm and it's super cooling and soothing and like great for if they shave they put this on it and they'll heal their skin a little bit faster um amazing whoa so great gift for the guy if you need one if anybody wants a sample of that let me know and i'll send you one because i just got it i can make you little cups to try um, okay, so the liquid sunshine, you guys have seen me talk about that. That's the one that's like the body makeup. Okay, let me back up. Oof. So, now if I want to have a little bit of like bronzy, super tan, like firm looking skin, I can put this on. And it smells great too. And then I feel like, like, because I've got that glow on my cheeks, now I have the glow here too. But you can mix it. Some people ask me all the time, like, can I put that in my foundation or can I put that on my face? You can. But do you see it's on my hands? It washes right off. So it's not a self-tanner. It's body makeup. It, like, covers everything and makes you look, like, perfect. All right. Let me blend that a little bit right there. All right, I'm ready. So yeah, thank you guys for getting ready with me. Hope it was fun and I hope you look awesome and feel awesome tonight too when you go out. So take some pictures and put, share them with me.
Have a great night. Happy 4th of July.